Welcome to the first video of the class. I just want to take an opportunity to say, don't be intimidated. There's a lot going on in this screen. We have all these buttons up here. We have all these different menus. We are only going to focus on about five or 10% of that. So I will walk you through step-by-step step exactly what you need to use. And you also have the discussion or message me if you have any questions. I know 3D can be very intimidating. It was when I first started learning it, and I'm, I'm still learning it, to be honest. I'll never stop learning it. It's one of those things, you will always be a student of this. So don't be intimidated. This course is designed for the beginner to follow step-by-step step and get the same results. Really quick, I wanted to take a moment to mention you can download Maya for free and have a trial for one month. And if you are a student at a university or somewhere, you can prove that you're a student, I would highly, highly recommend that you go for the free software for three years. There will be a little window that pops up that says it's a student version, but other than that, you have a fully functional Maya. So if you're a student at a school, definitely do this. Okay, back to the video. So let's dive in and kind of look at what we're dealing with here in this software. Ignore all of these buttons at the top, okay? We just want to learn how to navigate around this welcome sign. Your Maya should look something like this, this type of a view with a grid down here. Your grid might be a different size and you probably don't have this welcome sign. I just made that. We can just select that and delete it. One of the first things we can do is turn on anti-aliasing. You might be able to see that my, that my view here is a little pixelated. If we create a new shape here, I'm going to hit F to focus in. The edges are a little rough. We can kind of maybe see that. I don't know if it shows up on your screen, but there's an anti-aliasing button up here. And if you click that, it'll just smooth everything out. And hopefully you'll be able to see that on your screen, even though it's probably difficult to see that difference on mine. That's just one nice little thing to turn on for your eyes. Next, let's take a look at how to navigate. You will need a three button mouse for this. So if you're working on a laptop and you don't have a mouse plugged in, pause the video and go plug in a three button mouse. Okay, for the three button mouse to scroll around, if we just start clicking, we, we're only selecting things. For us to be able to navigate with our mouse, we need to hold down Alt. And then once we start clicking, now we can rotate. If we hold the middle mouse, we can pan left and right. And right click, we zoom in and out. And those are the three buttons, that's it. So now we know how to move around. One thing to note is the center point that we're pivoting around when we view. If I'm over here and I wanna see pivot around the sphere, I'm pivoting around the center of my view. As I did earlier, I can select the object and hit F. If that isn't working, you can go to view and say, look at selection. And that'll do a similar thing and reset the center pivot to be far enough away from the camera that it's easy to rotate around. The menu on the left is the outliner. It shows what is in our scene. Currently we only have the sphere. If you can't see this, go to Windows Outliner. If your right side doesn't look like this, you can go to the top and hit this little box and that will be our channel box. And you can see there's also tabs along the side here that describe what each one of these are as we go through them. And the channel box is where we'll do most of the work we can click and middle mouse drag in the viewport to isolate different directions and change their values and see what we have selected here, like the sphere. All right, thanks for watching the first video and let's jump into making a line graph.